This is Infection, the H1Z1 podcast, recorded live on Tuesday, June 30th, 2015, episode 24. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Infection, the H1Z1 podcast. Infection is your source for the latest information on H1Z1. We bring you the latest news, change logs, developments, strategies, and speculation each and every week. My name is Nick Craig at Gamecast Live is my Twitter, infectionpodcast.com is the website. Joining me, Brian with an eye, Aldridge. What's going on, Brian? Hey, not too much. It has been so hot here lately. It hit, I think, a couple days ago, 110 degrees. Really? Which is pretty hot for Boise. Just a tad. I mean, I guess you could, I, you know, I would call that, a, I'd call that warm, Brian. All right. If you want to know how hot it was, my the glass on my rear view or my left driver's side mirror fell off when I pulled out of my driveway because whatever adhesive was behind it attaching it. Are you kidding me? Melted. No, no. I had to order a new piece of glass. You know what this means, Brian? Hmm. Global warming is confirmed. Yes, that's what it is. <laughs> but this until is not- we have the, until we have that really early freezing winter that everybody complained about. Hey, you know, but this is not political propaganda show. This is Infection, the H1Z1 podcast, and we talk about H1Z1. And well, we can't talk about H1Z1 weather, I guess. Brian, I don't know why I had to get into this. We've got a special treat for everybody tonight. We are The atomic clock is going to be adding a single second at 7.59.59, so we're gonna have an extra, you'll have an extra second worth of infection tonight. Uh, and hopefully that doesn't screw... 7.59, okay, that's your time, right? Yes, yeah, 7.59.59 Eastern, the atomic clock will be adding a single second so it can catch up with the rotation of the Earth. So hopefully and that doesn't crash the entire Some servers internet. may be crashing, yeah. yeah. So maybe that's what happened with Twitch. No, I don't think so. Yeah, Twitch was, they're testing. Twitch was down. Um, but it's weird, some of the... Like, I believe it's the Japanese stock market is opening late so that the clock and, the, and like, late trading in the U.S. is is closing early. So this yeah. is like a Y2K thing going on. This happened in like 2012 and nothing happened. They, they've done this like... 2012? Are you talking about 2000 or 2012? 2012, they added a second as well. Oh, they had another one? Yeah. They, they, well, they, I remember 2000, yeah, everybody was freaking out. And I actually uh, had applied for a job to manage the network for a, a bank chain. And they said, I, I applied in 1999 and I got accepted the position, but they said... We don't want to have you start until January 1st in case everything crashes. We don't want to start you into chaos because uh-huh. <laughs> they were so worried that everything was going to crash on January 1st of 2000. So I started on January 1st of 2000 after they realized that nothing happened. Yeah, a few web servers crashed and that's about it. Yeah, it, it wasn't a big deal. Well, that's a little blast. So I'm sure this will be the same thing. I oh, mean, yeah, my no. servers are up to date. I, this is really for like Linux servers. This is going to be not that this is a tech show, but the ones <laughs> that are going to be affected are the old servers. You know, the ones that haven't been updated for quite some time. Anything that's been updated to recent, you know, security updates at the least are going to not crash. Yeah, I mean, this isn't going to be a problem. The, uh, the, they implemented the atomic clock, and I think 1972 is when they switched over to that. And yeah. since then, they have updated the atomic clock 13 times to keep it up with the revolution of the Earth or something like that. I was, I, there was some yeah. article that I was just I skimmed through the other day. So you'll enjoy your extra second of it. But you know, we're being told in chat, this is, the, this, is, this is H1Z1 podcast, so we should probably talk about H1Z1. Um, we had our pre-patch live stream the first time in how Yay! many months, Brian, since they, since since they, they announced, announced they're going to do it every week. <laughs> yeah. This is the first one they've actually had. Uh, yeah. And they started off that live stream, uh, first of all, with no audio, but you know, Hey, we're not, you know, we're, we're not going to, we're not going to badge them hey. on that, <laughs> but that's happened before. <laughs> the first news, um, is that the patch that was supposed to be today, the server wipe patched to add the military outposts have, have, that's been pushed to July 2nd. So that will be Thursday. So this is the second, infection podcast in a row with nothing new happening on the day we're doing the show um yeah but we have plenty well, of news the frustrating thing is they don't put out the test you would figure they would put out the the patch notes one two three, three days. days before the patch because yeah. they should know what's going into it but i think a lot of times it's like they're trying to push out stuff push out stuff and they don't actually know exactly what's going to be into the patch until well, that day i mean you look at it right now brian the test servers are not even up to date to what's going to be in the game on Thursday. 
So the yeah. test servers are still we, behind. We've talked about this, about how they really need to start rolling out those patches on the test server at least a week before they're going to make those live. And the biggest problem we have here, Brian, and um, the, the 4th of July weekend is coming up. So that means Friday is going to be off. So this Thursday patch, if there's a very big issue, we are yeah, all royally they, screwed the for the 4th of July. The office, yeah, is the office is closed. So, so. we better hope to God... And, and, and just pray that there is not a game-breaking bug, because if there is, it will not be patched until Monday. So how many of the last number of patches like this have had those issues where there's been memory leaks, um, you know, just client crashes like crazy? I mean, a few of them. And it's not been every single one. So it hasn't. I mean, we can really hope that this is going to be one that's super stable, because I know that they're putting out patches to fix some of these memory leaks that they've had. I mean, they're, they're doing things that are supposed to fix a lot of the bugs we have. So hopefully this is what makes it more stable yeah. and they aren't going to have the chaos. Now, the only thing that's kind of scaring me here, Brian, is like I said, the test server isn't currently representative of what's going to be in the live server. They're, they're rushing, and I shouldn't say rushing. They're, make, they're getting things done before the patch. So there's yeah. last-minute things that the, the artists are putting in, last-minute assets that are being put in. And, you know, we've seen this in the past when stuff gets pushed in last minute. Look at the AKMO, stuff like that doesn't work, mm -hmm. and we can have problems. And especially over a you know, four-day weekend or three-day weekend, I don't know when, I don't know if they're going to be closed on Monday or whatever, because that's a common thing too. Um, you know, hopefully there's just not that big issue. But uh, that patch will be happening Thursday at, uh, at a, I would assume, 2 a.m. or 3 a.m., their normal time. Yeah. Um, so they'll, I guess they'll have all day Thursday to, if there's a huge issue to maybe fix it. But other than that, it's going to be pretty much it'll be what Monday. it is. It, it'll be what it is until Monday. And, and I guess you look at the other plus side, a lot of people will be out traveling. So you may not have as many people actually playing H1Z1. I will be on vacation next week. So I'll have to figure something out for that. Um, yeah. I've been thinking about that. Go well, good. And so I, you know, and we all know in the U S how great hotel internet is. So we're just, we're not even going to attempt to, to try to do something like that. Um, or maybe we will, who knows, but get a hotspot. I mean, we could always, I don't know. We could pull something off. If we really wanted to. I mean, I could, I do have, even if it was audio only, I have eight you. gigabytes of data, so I could do that. Yeah. But I don't want to screw everybody else on my family plan and be like, Hey, screw you guys. I'm taking all, I need to do a Skype call. Infection yeah. podcast. Um, yeah, <laughs> Ferment says, you guys are in luck. I can be the co-host. We've, we already discussed this. Yeah, Ferment was... has no filter. Yeah. Um, so let's get into some H1Z1. The patch has been moved to Thursday, and there was a pre-patch live stream this week, Brian. Uh, yes. First in a while. And this was really cool. It was about it was about half an hour. Um, not the longest pre-patch live stream. But, um, but I, I think that's... Not to interrupt you, but Oops, sorry. I kind of think that's good. Well, I, I apologize this time. Usually I just interrupt you. Hey, you no, know, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> hey, uh, you know, with this one, I think it's it's fine, though, uh, because they were like, okay, we don't have anything else to do. I've seen some of the uh, previous ones that they've done where they're kind of running around searching for anything because yeah. they either forgot what they're going to talk about, you know, kind of got distracted, or there's nothing else to talk about and they're just running around killing each other or, or killing things. So... I, I really think that um, I, I think keeping it short, if that's what you, if you have three things to show, show those three things and then move on with it. And I think that was fine. Yeah. And the one, uh, the one big thing is this is not a massive patch. It's not one of those patches where there's, you know, 150 things that they've updated inside of the game. This was like three or four main things. Um, but that half an hour, I, I think half an hour to 45 minutes for those pre-patch live streams are going to be perfect, right? Simple, yeah. sweet to the point that they, they came, it was uh, Adam and Greg, they they hosted it. They came on. They started right off with getting into content. There was, you know, not a whole lot of other stuff. It was just straight to the point. You know, here's what we're doing, and then they were out. Um, and that worked out pretty well. A lot of yeah. useful information. They showed a lot of cool stuff, um, stuff that isn't necessarily on the test servers yet either. Or stuff. Yeah, mean, and, the, and and at least in this one, they said, hey, okay, there's going to be stuff here, and it should be here before the next patch because our and they explained it. They didn't mm -hmm. just leave it at that. They were like, our art directors still have to place some items exactly. here. Exactly. And then the items are maybe on our servers or on our test build or whatever, but they haven't been placed or exported. You know, they, they did a little bit of an explanation. So it wasn't like, okay, this is it. Yeah. So let's get into the first thing, Brian. We have a video for this. They've added the fire arrows 
and the explosive arrows to the test server. And those are that those have been live since last yeah. Thursday. Um, and I've got a quick video here of those arrows, and you can see this here. Um, I recorded this in game. They uh, the one problem with this this is the explosive arrow, so it pushed out a big uh, plume of, of smoke and fire. But the one problem with this is it doesn't kill the zombies right well, away. After a couple of them. Yeah, you will. have to, but in this video... It, it does do that knockback, which is nice. Exactly. In this video, I think I shot three or four of them to actually kill the zombies. Um, so that was the fire arrow. Um, like it, it, The knockback animation, and they kind of slide, and then a few get back up, and then I hit it again and hit it again. And then by now, that, notice that they all fall down at the exact same time. If yes. they could... I mean, that... To me, that takes out that realism of, you know, I have something that's exploding and they're kind of flying different directions. If you look, mm -hmm. they just all flop exactly the same. And that's going to be something they're going to have to polish, I think, to make it to where maybe things fall at a little bit different rate or, um, you know, they kind of go a little bit different directions, not exactly from center. Yeah. But, but I think that's a good start. You now, know, they all get knocked back. And the, you do have an opportunity to pull out your bow at that point or a gun and shoot them when they're down. So yeah. it, it is a benefit. Now, the one thing I think they could easily improve with those is if you shoot the arrow directly at a single zombie and there's other ones in the race, at least that one should die. I mean, that the, the yeah. arrow hitting you and exploding should at least kill one zombie, I would think, with that first one. If you aim it at a zombie. If, it's at, if you shoot it at the ground, no. But if, it, if that contact makes... Or if that arrow makes contact with a zombie, uh, yeah, you know, the zombie player, th that should be at least one kill. They shouldn't all fall down. Now and then you I have heard to put someone in. when this initially was released say that they shot a zombie directly in the head with one of these and it didn't kill. It, it. does not kill them. No, so, I don't believe it. I, I at least on the test server, there was no direct hit that killed the zombies. It just knocked it down and then the second or third arrow killed them. And in that large so group, it was that's going to be something they're going to be patching here soon. I would hope <laughs> that doesn't seem right. If you if you have a, an explosion right on their head, you would think it at least would blow up that zombie's head. Yeah. So so um, so that was that was the arrows and they showed that in the pre patch live stream. That was a video I recorded with a few of the guys from our clan on we were playing on a pve server actually just to kind of play around and test some stuff out yeah. and uh the next thing brian we can go into this the outposts that they've added i recorded about two minutes in game of the test server of their quote unquote outposts uh and we'll talk about that a little bit but uh here's the video and i'm going to kind of narrate over this so this is the sign you see uh, near all of the outposts and it just says u.s army restricted area and this is the outpost that is by the waste dump and um this is the C10 slash C9 um, outpost here. And this is pretty much what all of them look like. You have two of these, uh, which are very similar to the military towers that you can build in bases. They're tweaked a little bit, but these are at all of the outposts. There's two at this one. This is the C10 by the waste dump. And you can see here, there's these two towers, and then there's some stuff in the middle here. Uh, just a few tables that I would imagine would be spawning loot and some other stuff. Uh, now I'm showing uh, just kind of the way that the sun rays bounce off the trees and whatever else. Uh, and the same thing here, the lighting effects and the, with the whole trees and the wind and everything are really, really cool uh, inside of the game right now and, and adding a lot of cool new features to that. And there's a few more military outposts throughout the ba uh, map that they're calling. This one is at, I believe, A4, A5. And this is very similar to the one that you see by the way stump. It's got two more of those towers uh, similarly placed, one is up on a hill, one is right next to the roadside, and again, it's got a few of those tables. Um, and, and you can see I'm showing that off right here. Now, the next one that we're going to, this is the big one. This is on the uh, Governor's Highway as you're going north, and there's a fenced-in area. It was really foggy at this point, so it's kind of hard to see. But there's a big fenced-in area um, that's off to the right-hand side of the road if you're running north, and there's, I want to say, six or eight of these military towers in that fenced-off area. And um, like Brian said when he mentioned that some of the art stuff isn't in the game yet, that's what this is referring to. Uh, and you can see this is a really long, uh, you know, r really long run-up in, in a very large area here. So um, as you can, I'll go inside of this, this thing in a, in a second, and you'll see that there's one of the towers. I'm running around with a member of our, our group here. And you can just see all the different outposts that are in here. Um, they have plans on adding tents uh, and other military buildings into this outpost. They they weren't done yet for the test server, so they weren't in the test servers. But this area is going to be full of military-style 
and uh, like medical style tents and buildings and stuff like that. And I would imagine, you know, having stuff like the, the, the ammo and weapon lockers like you similarly have in, uh, you know, the, the dam and inside the police stations or whatever else. So that was my quick little tour through um, the new military outposts. So I'm going to say, Brian, I don't know if you had a chance to go on the test server or not and look at these, um, but the stuff by C9 slash 10 and A5, it's a complete disappointment. I'm just going to be blunt with it. Um, they made it seem like these military outposts were going to be these huge things that they were adding towards you know, roadblocks or whatever else, and it turns yeah. out that's not the case at all. The military outpost is going north on the governor's highway. But they're all not like that. Most of them, uh, at least that are at the end of the road, are just two watchtowers and some tables that spawn loot. That's it. Now, he made a kind of a hint towards the one that's going to be up towards the governor's mansion. You're going to be able to place a base inside of it. He and did they're kind of hoping that that creates some sort of a maybe a clan point of interest or yes. a large group point of interest for people trying to capture that area. Um, I think they really are going to have to figure out the whole, uh, you know, if someone placed a, a foundation, um, can you destroy everything off that foundation to then claim that? You mm -hmm. know, they, they've got to make it to where if someone places something there, they don't have that until the whole wipe. Yeah. You know, that for the rest of that time till the wipe. Yeah. They're going to have to come up with a way that it's capturable and actually someone can take it over and build on it or like, use it. And like Brian said, Brian said he hinted at it. He specifically said if there's going to be an area inside of that, that thing um, by the governor's mansion, that will allow you to place a base. That is their hope, is that somebody will build a base there. Um, but like Brian said, that I mean, it's just one area. So, like, the yeah. person that controls that is going to have all of that military loot spawning around them. I mean, that just seems like an unfair advantage. So that's where they're going to have to really get the system down to where if if we do capture that, we can explode everything off of a foundation, right? Yeah. Have that... the. Uh, have the foundation despawn and then claim, it. you know, make it so you can claim the ground tamper or whatever, Yeah, um, you know, whatever, whatever happens, they need to make it so that that area is claimable to where you do create that conflict of I'm going to capture this and I'm going to own it. Not that I'm just going to capture it and destroy everything you have. And then you can come back later and try to rebuild it. Yeah. Now one issue Joe is saying in chat is that he said, you can't shoot through that fence. So that is problematic in my opinion, because that that's a very large area controlled yeah, or the perimeter of it is a fence, um, so that just seems problematic. I'm not sure how they would deal with shooting through the fence because that seems like it would be an issue in general. But I'm not yeah. sure how they're going to figure that. At some point, they're going to have to because at that case, you could just hug the walls inside that thing, and pretty much be safe no matter where you are because you can't shoot through that fence. Yeah, and it's it's such a long distance that the other side, if someone is is surrounding it, they can't shoot from the other side. Yeah to the opposite fence. I mean, it's a pretty long distance. It's a very large area, yes. Now, one thing, you were playing through that and you could see the fog. So I want to come in a little bit about the weather system, uh -huh. um, that fog. For me, that's that immersion that I was telling you about. You know, I keep asking for immersion, something to make me just get caught up into the feeling of, of whatever's around you. And for me, that the, the feeling of when you were running through the slight fog, it, to me, it just seems like it's a little more spooky. Um, it, it's just, it takes you in the moment more than when it's always sunshine, <laughs> you know, and you're running around and you can see, you always know you can see a certain distance. Yeah. When, when there's that little bit of unknown of, I don't know, I can't quite see, am I running up to people that are, you know, all of a sudden they're going to be seen in a certain distance. Uh, I like that a lot more uh, to where it's not guaranteed that you're going to see somebody coming up or you're even going to know, going to know that they're zombies. We haven't seen those big uh, groups of zombies, the hordes that they were talking about. Have you ever really seen, I mean, they put those hordes in, but I think they took them out if I remember correctly, because I don't see them anywhere. I'm not sure. Um, I mean, I don't know. We don't really play with zombies. I don't know. I've never, I'm, I'm not normally in a large group of zombies. I, I normally stick out of the big cities where you would find those large groups anyway. Yeah, and the, and the hordes. I mean, they had those large numbers of zombies. Yeah, you know, for a while that they had out, and then they kind of took them all away at one of the one of the uh, wipes. And I'm wondering if you know you get this fog and you get the hordes where there's the possibility if you if you're driving around running around that you will run into a large horde. I, you know, I think that would really add to the play element that they that they're trying to build of it being spooky. Now, they, in that video, they did show. Um, 
in in the pre patch stream, they did show some of the new weather system, which we have. Um, so I can roll yes. right into that. So let's see here. So this is some of the weather system here. Um, this is the the thing he's showing right now. This is just the regular sunny system that we've seen for a very long time in the game. Um, this is nothing new right here, but um, what he'll do here in a second is he'll change the mode into a uh, what what they just call cloudy, um, and it looks like the fog is just. You know, it looks like there's more fog, but it's really just low-hanging clouds. And I think, Brian, that's that immersion you're talking about. Everybody keeps saying it's fog. Um, it's not really. It's just their cloudy mode. And you can see right here, the city and the visibility is cut way, way down uh, based yeah. off of this. And uh, this is, this is again, the cloudy uh, mode. And with the cloudy, with the fog, Brian, is when you get that really hardcore, um, and that's what he just implemented, you can barely see in front of you thing. Um, so that's how it looks during the day. And now you can see how that looks during the night. Very hard to see in front of you. And the next thing right here we're showing is the rain in the game. I know it's a little hard to see, but it's actually raining uh, inside the game right here. They're implementing that system back in. And um, th they've actually added a cool feature. When you run inside a building, the rain sounds like it's hitting the roof of a building. So it's not a constant rain sound. Yeah, and the real you, acoustics. Yeah, and now if you run back outside, it sounds like it's raining again. Which is really cool. Cool. I'm glad we're getting this uh, back in the game. And now he is now uh, Adam is changing the temperature, and now you have snow falling. You can see the the ground has this little like white uh, powder on it, and uh, it snows for a little while here. And uh, you can see there's some immense snowfall here, and the player model's kind of freaking out. And they said they would fix that, um, but that's what's going on with the weather system with cloudy, foggy, sunny, rainy. And, uh, and snowy, so we can expect that in the game pretty soon, and that's some cool stuff. That's really, you talk about right now, you run the game, it's constantly sunny, right? It's always yeah. clear. You can always see however far, you know, the, you can see as far as the render distance is. As it sets right now, if it's daytime, you can see, um, you know, as far away as you can possibly see when players will render. And this goes bring up and the wind. That's also in the yeah, that you can see everything kind of blowing around, like all the branches are, are moving in the wind. They mm -hmm. seem like they're kind of intense right now. It looks like they're still gonna have to get the realism in there for that. Yeah, and a, and they show some of those cool things. The way that the sun kind of flares uh, with the with the trees and everything. It looks really cool. It's really cinematic. Um, yeah, the game looks a lot better right now. None of that stuff is in the game, right? It's either super sunny or it's nighttime. And now. One thing I was thinking about, you remember the movie The Shining? Yes. Remember the scene where he's in the snow, like, and it's just piled on top of him? Yeah. Have you ever seen that? Yes. It, that, that's what it reminded me of <laughs> when the snow was falling on him and building up. I'll have to find it. Yeah. I'll now, the, the, it really quick. If, you, if you watch the pre-patch live stream, which is available on their YouTube channel, there'll be a link in the show notes. When he's running through the snow, the player model's kind of freaking out. Like, the snow's there, then it's not, then it's there. That will be fixed. Um once the game actually comes out, or once the, the weather system actually is implemented inside the game. But that's some cool stuff that's going on there. There we go. That's that's what I think of. The, that's what the you think, picture. Brian? Perfect. <laughs> yeah. With the snow building up on him, that's during the stream, that's exactly what I was thinking. All right. Well, wonderful. Um, so that's the <laughs> weather system. The next thing is Team BR, Brian. This is something that is, I think, really going to... Right now, you have this BR system where you sit there with your friends and you count down from three or five until you hit zero and then everybody clicks at the same time and you kind of just wait and hope that you're in the same lobby. And what they've added, uh, we talked about it a few weeks ago, they added two-player BR and five-player teamed BR. And the layout is really, really cool. Uh, yeah. So we can show that right here. This is what BR looks like. You have the options to join two-person BR or five-person BR. And when you click on one of them, you can see that there is a, uh, a group with five boxes. Your Steam friend list is available. And um, it's the same thing for two and five person. And the really cool thing is if you don't have any friends on your friends list that you're inviting, it will automatically just put other people in your game that are um, you know, in that Team BR thing. And everybody has to ready up. There's a chat. And uh, it's, it's going to be a nice, cool way for you to play with your friends and not have to uh, worry about, you know, just clicking that button and hoping that you get into the server when, uh, in this case, you'll actually be in the game with somebody because you're in a party with them. Uh, now, I had someone telling me, oh, this is guaranteeing that they're going to be introducing some sort of a clan system or grouping system in-game. 
And I told them, no, it's not. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. I don't think that means uh, well, that at and all. Then, No, and if you look at that interface that you're showing, mm -hmm. you'll be able to click on a, a Steam friend. Correct. Invite them to that group. So just temporarily in the menu system, you can make a group. Uh, and then that group will go away. Like if you went to, into a regular game, that group would not exist. So yeah. this is not any implementation of the clan system. This is because I kept having people say, hey, you know, look, they're implementing clan system. This is, from what I can tell, nothing to do with the clan system. These groups are purely just in the menu system and into whatever BR you're going into. Yeah, that is correct. This is just a, this is a team group BR system, but this is the right start to getting an actual group. This that's not what this means. Yeah. But the layout, how you have your Steam friends list on the right, you can see you have the two to five boxes at the top with whoever else is in your game. The chat you can system have a little is chat. in there. It's just yeah, so kind yeah. of like a waiting area chat. So while you're with your friends, say you know you can chat if you want to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or if you're playing with random people, you could say, hey, you know, you want to get on Skype, you want to get on Teamspeak, you can do stuff like that in that chat area, and then you all have to ready up before it'll put you in a queue uh, to play that. So that's in the game as well. Now, the next thing is uh, the leaderboards. And they yeah. implemented the leaderboards into the game. Uh, well, they're going to be in the test game. So this is how it's going to work. There's four leaderboards in the game. Uh, or, or inside the waiting area, there's four leaderboards. One, well, There's actually eight. Um, there's two on each wall. One uh, shows kills and one shows wins per wall. Yeah. And yep. one of the walls is updated daily, the second wall is uploaded weekly, the third wall is uploaded monthly, and the fourth wall they just said is a secret coming soon. But each yeah. wall has two leaderboards, again, one with kills and one with wins. And they even, Brian, you said this a few weeks ago, you know, having hackers show up on that list, and I believe uh, Clegg said I, I that. Call, I totally call Clegg that. said that they're... I don't remember what the vision is going to be looking at those leaderboards daily to say, hey, you know, why is this and guy I think, got I think at the end kills? of that conversation, I said, hey, you know, Dave Rick, here's an idea. <laughs> Go well, ahead. Huh, interesting how that works. And, and, and there it was. Because uh, you kind of disagreed with I did. Me. I, I, oh, I did disagree with you. I didn't know how often they were. I thought there was going to be one leaderboard, and I, and I thought they were just, I didn't know how it was going to be updated. But the daily leaderboard is easy. I mean, you, somebody's not going to have 5,000 wins in a single day or, you know, 5,000 well, kills in a single even, day. But even, yeah, if they go through and they have 15 to 20 kills every BR, yeah, you know, come on. Well, I mean, you'll Re see it. It'll start racking up. You know, are, you gonna, are you really going to have 250 BR kills throughout a day? I mean, unless you're playing all day, that's a kind of unrealistic yeah. number. Yeah, and so that's, that's what I was getting at is this will be an easy way. I mean, there are maybe people that are really good. If those people are that good, why aren't they doing a Twitch stream? First of all, well, it's not even that. I, I, I disagree well, well, with that. But, but, but I'm, no, I'm, I'm just saying if someone is that good to where they are dominating everyone else, people want to watch that. Yeah. Why don't, why don't they get a Twitch stream? People could sit there and watch them, you know? And, and it's not necessarily going to be a just because you're on the top of the list, you're, you're a hacker. It's going to be that they're just going to watch you. And if you are a legitimate player and you happen to just be really good and you've got a lot of free time on your hands, then you're fine. But if you're a hacker, it's going to be very hard to hack in BR now and get away with getting a, a, a bunch of kills and a bunch noticed. of wins. It's going to be noticed, exactly. Right now, nobody's going to see it. And also, on that leaderboard, it's the top 20 places, and then at the bottom, it will show your rank in whatever leaderboard you're looking at. Now, do you see them in the future bringing in a leaderboard at the end, like when you die, you have the option to sit at the desk screen and kind of watch the statistics of, of the game as it goes? Well, the interesting thing... Uh, that during the pre-patch live stream, they weren't sure how um, often that leaderboard was going to update. The way that they left it at the stream, I thought it was going to be once you join the lobby, the leaderboard is up to date, and then once you rejoin a lobby, it's up to date. I don't think it's a live update updating list. That, that's what they were confused about. So sitting yeah. at the end of the screen, I'm not sure how that's going to work. But I, I just think I'm wondering if this is kind of leading that direction because that that would make it a lot more enjoyable if you're like, oh, I got killed by this guy. And you kind of can see through the statistics who's yeah. alive, how many kills that they had, you know, different statistics well, like that. One, they are keeping track of them. The one thing, Brian, is they said when they announced these leaderboards that they were going to be online and they have not made a reference to them being online. So I'm not sure if they're going to be online, but they said in-game and online leaderboards would be available. And right now it does not appear that the online leaderboards are going to be available because they haven't, they haven't made a reference to them since they announced yeah. it got months ago now that they said that hey there's going to be in-game leaderboards um 
so that's not in there yet but the in-game ones are there and those will be in the patch come thursday now okay so what's your guess i have my guess what's your guess on that extra leaderboard the one that they are saying is secret now we don't have any inf inside information on this right no we don't i i, it, I literally just watched the prepad i was not a, i was away last night so i i had I'm, to watch I'm not, the pre -pad i'm not year. like trying to leak any information this is just purely our speculation this is speculation what um, do you think might be in that leaderboard i feel like it's going to be something that they just like that's just like it switches back and forth like it'll be like I don't even know. Just like, like time alive. Just something that they can just switch up whenever they want. It's going to be just kind of like a whatever board. Like, hey, we can, okay. since they're logging all those statistics, you know, time alive, you know, how many BRs have you been in, stuff like that. You know, how many people have been killed the most. Just kind of a whatever stats they have, they can throw on that leaderboard. I'm not really sure, though. Yeah, and I think that would be an interesting idea of kind of changing up most, you know, time played. Just, just little things that you could yeah. kind of switch through. I was kind of wondering if it's going to be hint towards when the clan system is implemented, like most kills for a clan or some sort of a group, or maybe um, server statistics, like this server has this many zombies kills, this many player kills, you know, maybe flip through some of those odd statistics that you normally don't see. Mm -hmm. That, I mean, that kind of, that yeah. could be an interesting thing too, but I was kind of wondering if it was going to be something towards clan People are saying tournaments, special events. stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, special events, yeah, tournaments. Um, Musty's saying all-time kills and wins. I'm not really sure. I think they would have said that. They, they made it seem like it was something that was secret. It's going to be something that they're going to be releasing as, yeah, like, hey, check this out. Yeah. So Or, or it might be some feature that is yet unreleased. It could be a new, you know, BR type or something. It's kind of hard to say. Maybe it's with the group BRs. If you could eventually name your group or, or get a group that's more permanent somehow you could have you could have kind of like a tournament system between those groups yeah so we're gonna have to wait and see what they do with that extra leaderboard um not really sure yet but we will find out soon enough yeah. um so let's see that's that was pretty much the pre-patch live stream like i said it wasn't a huge pre-patch live stream so um you know, yeah, they, they just discovered few a few things, but the weather was the biggest thing, I yes. think, for the whole live stream. And that was definitely a good check this out. We want to show off some of the stuff we've been telling you that we're, we're going to be bringing out. Yeah. And, you know, it's Tuesday right now. If you're watching this, hop on the test server and go on a PVE server and just run around. You can see the fog and, and the lighting effects and the wind. There will be no the rain yet. No, so it's going to be wind be and there. fog. Currently. Now, the one problem that I have just seen personally and when i was talking to some people before the show is that it's always cloudy and foggy yeah like a majority of now this is what people are understanding there's cloudy and if, if we, we in that video again um there's cloudy and there's foggy those both exist and they can exist at the same time so you can't say it's always foggy because it may just be cloudy or it might just be foggy or it might yeah. be both so there's three different ways that it can be not good visibility well and i think right now they probably don't have the true random weather generator on because yeah, i'm not sure with with the true uh random one they'd be able to say okay the temperature is going up and the temperature is going down the precip precipitation is going up the precipitation is going down so when the pre precipitation is up and the temperature is up it's raining yeah. When the precipitation is down and the, the temperature is down, it's snowing. So they, it's more of an automatic sliding scale that he was showing there. And so I think right now they're really only having certain. I'm uh, not sure. I think that was certain just. Certain things adjust. You know, it's not, it's not, they're not putting anything that's going to allow it to rain or snow. So probably the precipitation is stuck at one thing. Um, I don't necessarily think so. I mean, that's. Well, they, they, it's not raining and, and snowing. So. Well, because that weather system, the weather system isn't in the test servers yet. I don't think. I think just the fog system is. But well, but if you look at what he was playing with, he actually turned it on. So I, I think that well, they're just not having the settings change to where it doesn't happen. So you know that it doesn't do something that's incorrect. I'm not sure. But all, they they do have it implemented. He has a slide. Yeah, there was a slider that he could prove from zero to a hundred with precipitation, and it could. I just be, think they're limiting what you can actually do. You know, like when you're on the test server, it's not doing snow and rain, so the precipitation is not moving to those extents. Possibly. I, let's see. Um, 
and Nisco is asking, will we ever see snow? I think that I think so. I think we'll I think see we'll see snow come this. I think we'll see it come this patch. I mean, the weather system is going to be implemented. Why will it not snow? Not this patch. Well, I I think that in the next month to month and a half we'll see the actual snow system. Maybe the test servers. Yeah. Next of, patch. Yeah. Yes. But uh, yeah, of course, soon. I mean, they're, they're demoing it like it's ready to go. It was pretty close. I mean, the, there were some weird little glitches with the player. But it looked like overall the snow was landing on the ground and sticking. Yeah. And, you know, it, it was doing a pretty good job. It was yeah. pretty close to ready. Yeah. Um, now, we have to remember that weather system wasn't the game day one. Um, and Adam explained. Now, the rain. Did you, you looked at the rain. Was it much better than, than what we remember seeing? Yeah. Well, well the, the reason, the thing Adam was explaining is day one when it was in the game, um, there was like a there was an interval between when it would rain and when it would rain again, and he said as the servers were up, that interval got smaller and smaller and smaller, eventually to the point where it rained twenty four seven for the first like week of the game. All it did was rain until they removed it. It was a it was a constant rainfall. Um, the only time I don't remember and, it raining, and the rain the rain effects weren't as nice to where it was just like lines yeah, on it, your screen. It, it looked like like no anti aliasing, and it was just like constant just things moving up and down the screen this this is like a nice rain you can even see like the player i can go back to this and show this um because we'll keep talking about it but like the player's head gets wet um i mean this is this is a really cool system that's going to be implemented into the game uh nisco saying he wants thunder yeah eventually that uh, all that yeah stuff's imagine gonna be if there. they could get like because the, they've got some pretty realistic clouds at the moment imagine if they could get a lot and this man direct x 11 <laughs> direct x 9 brian's nerding out <laughs> Drex X9 is not going to have what you're thinking of, like when you see thunder and it goes, you know, and, and, and you see the bolt go through. That was great. But, that was great. But, but once they can integrate DirectX 11, they can do some real lightning effects that, that will just be in the you know, look realistic. Like you look at the sky and you can see the thunder. And, and as he said, you know, just you can see the thunder. Put, yeah. put a chill down your spine. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's going to be good. Um, so you can see we're going to get to the rain. Or you can here. see the lightning. I like you're, you're a weather nurse. You're like, you can't see thunder. Yeah, I know. Um, but so you so, can see the lightning and, and you can hear. The thunder there you go. You can see it's raining it's right like here and you can see the player. The head is reflecting the sun. It looks like it's greasy. It's same thing with his shirt because it's wet and it's it's reflecting that. So this is this is pretty good. This rain system as it looks in this patch. And, and it just the rain almost just looks like the fog. It's not it's not these just you know, really blatant lines down the screen. And the same thing with the snow system. There's just, you know, these just little uh, white, um, you know, just pellets falling from the sky. It's not too much, um, but but it's in the game and, and it, you know, it, it works. And, and even in this case with the snow, it's just, it's just, it looks like it does when it snows outside. But I don't know how much yeah. snow you see, but not that, that snow is exactly what it looks like when it's, when there's a heavy snowfall outside. The distance, it's just, everything is very blurry. That's yeah. all that is. So I think that the weather system at this point is very accurate, and, and, and I'm happy with it because I'm a weather nerd, and that stuff is cool. <laughs> I would love to see the thunder, Brian. If, if DirectX 11 is that good where you can see the thunder, I'm in. You can. You can see the thunder in DirectX 11. Is that what you're telling well, me? Well, you can see the lightning. <laughs> I'm sure the bug, there will be bugs where you can see the thunder as well. <laughs> you just see the sound sprite in the air. The little yeah. speaker it's icon. Like it's, it has a little, little thing that's labeled Thunder you know, <laughs> fill in here. Thunder.mp3. It's just in, in, the, in the sky. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, so that was the pre-patch live stream. The one, a little hint at the end, Brian, and this was, um, this was very good. The larger map has been confirmed. Yes. And there has been a date, a, specul a speculative date has been thrown out. Let's, we're not taking this like, oh man, if this isn't done, I'm not going to play H1Z1 yeah. anymore. The speculative, eh, okay, what, I'm not even trying. Speculative. To speculative date is August for the new zoning system, which will be double the size of the current map. And I mean, when you sit down and go, "Oh man, August, this is the last day of June. We are in July." Yeah, they, so, they, they're gonna be moving fast. I do expect a few pushbacks. Oh yeah, I'm expecting this September. So when we say August, so that means two weeks of delays at least. No, no I mean so, this so is a August, big thing. The very end of August to I would say September or October. September, yeah. Because here's the thing with this, the the new medical thing is going to be in the the game. Yeah, the new medical thing, the new city is going to be in the game. This is, and plus they're working on something. I don't know when they have time to worry about this new map. It's it's a month away. 
two months away? Yeah, I, I mean, you would figure they would be seeing, we, we see that they're starting to render the buildings and things, but still, if you look at the image that they sent out, there's still a lot of missing stuff. Like, just because they've render, rendered the buildings, there's still a lot of everything else that they still have to fill in and, and render and, and make look normal. So I don't know how quick of a process that's going to be, but there it, there is a lot of work between now and, and them actually releasing that map. Unless they're they've got people that have, been doing stuff that just isn't showing up on those renders. They don't have a big enough team to realistically be doing updates to the main game and making that work. And I just I don't see it possible. What do they have? A, they have a twenty to thirty man team. Yeah, it's like a thirty ish. Yeah, there's no way. Yeah. And how many? We see people talking publicly. Then you got to remember there's PR and salespeople and all those other people that that aren't actually making the game. So I just I don't see it happening. I think August, it's very ambitious, don't get me wrong, but I don't think we're going to see that happening. So, yeah. um, you know, and that's funny, you look in the comments, I read somebody saying August of 2016, <laughs> um, but I think September, October is more realistic. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I mean, it'll be interesting to see if they actually hold it up. I mean, if they can, and how sparse will the, the landscape be? I mean, that's this the problem. something that they release... That's the problem. And it's just going to be a few things set here and there. That's not what people, people want to go out and explore. Like when I see new areas, like in WoW, I always bring up WoW. In WoW, when new stuff was released, you always wanted to run around and find all the new stuff. That's because stuff was there. Um, if you put it to where, like, let's say they put some outposts out there and that's like the only thing there. Well, that's kind of a waste of running around. And I, I feel like that, I feel like, the H1Z1 new map is going to be exact double the map we have now with double the blank space. Yeah. Uh, hopefully not. Uh, I mean, just realistically, fill all this, and then we have talked about how they really need to bring in, you know, fill in all all the stuff. And there was a big, huge gap between between the governor's mansion and Pleasant Valley. So they are kind of filling that in with something. But that's, I'm thinking more of, you know, put stuff to where you constantly feel like you're around, you know, reality. Like the problem is, is the cities area. are too small. Even Pleasant Valley, the biggest city, is too small. You look at eight, look at DayZ. Look at how, do you remember how big Electro was? There was like a hundred buildings to go into. Yeah. And a dock and all this. I mean, never ending supply of things to do. And then you yeah. had Churro right next to it. And it was the same size. PV, their biggest city. I mean, half the buildings don't even have anything in them. They're just that, those empty shops with just a bunch of stuff scattered on the ground. There's not even anything yeah. in there. So, now, But that, that is one thing. They, it seems like they have a couple people that go in and actually fill the interiors of those buildings. And, you know, and I, I've seen that they have been focusing on residential buildings. Yeah. Um, and then it'll be interesting to see if once they get the city rolling out, you know, how much time are they going to spend? Because it seemed like with, with, as you said, Pleasant Valley, they did a lot of cookie cutter stuff of, okay, let's scatter this stuff on the ground here. You know, scattered, okay, this one's done. Let's go to the next one. How much time are they going to really fill to make it feel like, okay, this was something that was inhabited. Um, it's with some of the, ta with the, some of the houses, they've kind of created a little bit of storyline to where when, uh, when you go in that house, like it looks like they, they barricaded the door. You know, there were different things that happened in that yeah. house. Of, and you could tell that people were surviving in there for a while. They, they had a tour look like, okay, this house had people in it for a while. They tried to barricade. They got overrun. You could kind of tell a story based on what you saw there. Uh, if you look at the, if, if you look at, at these ones, as you said, in the city, there's not that story there. Like these were supposedly shops. And now they're just all empty. Like there's nothing there's, there. There's not even like, the, and some of the shops have like you know, hangers laying on the ground and carts and, but then there's some that are literally empty. But in end times, people went and looted all the shirts. I mean, not even shirts. There's not even like things to hold. The, it's just an empty floor. There's nothing yeah. in there. There's it, no it, filing it cabinets. A few random things around. There's just nothing there. So here's the thing. They're going to update the size of this map, but if it's just a bunch of this open space like we have right now, who cares? You're just going to spend double the time getting to the place you need to go. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm just being realistic with you. And that's what it is. 
if they're going to double the size of the map, there needs to be stuff everywhere. Constantly, there needs to be things. Those campsites yeah. everywhere. Yeah. And, and that's where, with some of these games, and like if, if you look at um, Grand Theft Auto V, that's one thing I always love to reference through because if you look at what they did with the map there, they mm -hmm. used every inch of that map for something. Like if you go Grand Theft Auto from one end of the map to the other, you've gone through desert, you've gone through you know, city, you've gone through um, just whatever you could imagine is going to be in there it is somewhere on that one map. And it doesn't, it always feels like there's stuff around you. Like it's nothing is the same. It's not cookie cutter. Yeah, I can't imagine how much time and money they really put into that. Um, but realistically, that that is the end goal. <laughs> if you get something that feels that inhabited and that real, um, they're, they're not going to have the manpower and the money to do that. But, you know, that's kind of that's kind of what you aim towards, not just cookie cutter, let's put these out here. Okay, we need to have more area. Let's do more cookie cutter everywhere else. They have to make it to where it looks real and it puts a story in your mind as you run around, you know, kind of, you can tell your own story. If they're not going to be doing storytelling, because that's, I, that's what I get out of this is they don't seem to be doing storytelling yet. They, yeah. they got to make it so that what's around you tells the story then. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I don't know. They, they need to figure something out. Something is going to have to, something is going to have to change. Yeah. Uh, now the other thing, Brian, that we may not, that you might not be thinking about is now with this fog and clouds, the map is going to seem, I think, a lot bigger because you're not going to be able to see Pleasant Valley oh, from everywhere. from half the map away. Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna need to be on top of Pleasant Valley to see Pleasant Valley, and that and may make good. the map bigger. But there's yeah, still got to be stuff. Hopefully, gives there. you that feeling if it doesn't seem well. When you, I guess, when it's more foggy and cloudy, you can't see you can't see the open space for what it is of just being a giant open space mm -hmm. with nothing. You, you, you know, you don't know that that's a giant open space until you run through it. Yes. And so you, but it, you don't it, have maybe the perspective it won't feel that much. because you won't have the perspective that it's a huge yeah. open area. So that's something yeah. to look at as well. But either way, there needs to be a lot of content in yeah. this new map. And I hope that they're doing that because right now let's be realistic. Pleasant Valley PV or I'm sorry, Pleasant Valley Cranberry. That's pretty much it. Yeah. And just you, the, then that air, little area in between with the with the with Abraham. And well, the and if you look at the game files, it's not like they have twenty different sets of of grass, twenty different sets of trees, you know, of styles. It's it's a lot of the same thing repeated over and over again. Uh, and so, for what they have been working with, that is, you know, they've done a pretty good job of making it feel like it's not just all just exactly the same. But realistically, it all is exactly the same. Uh, it's it's all the same pine trees and and uh, foliage and berries and all that. So that for me, if they could just even and I know that Nisco even brought this up. Like when we did our interview with them, he was like, "Ask him about the uh, the trees and everything." If they could even do different types of grass, different type of foliage, different types of trees, imagine how much that would make the map feel fuller and different as you went from area to area and maybe this forest is different than the forest on the other side of the map yeah it's just adding new and i say dynamic i don't really mean dynamic but different dynamic content like yeah, dynamics said, like yeah. diff different types of trees here different make it look different even if it's all the same make it look different yeah well just like they do the skins on on the shirts and all these other, these other things put some different skins on the trees yeah you know I mean, if you're going to use the exact same models, at least put some different skins on them to where it does feel different. Yeah, they, the, some, something will have to be figured out. And, and I really hope they put time to it. And that's why I, really, I don't think it's going to be done by August. Not because they're not capable, but because for them to release the map that they should release, they're going to need more time than that. Yeah. They're, 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 they're just going to need more time than that. Yeah. For them to make sure the map is full of stuff. But I don't think they're going to do full of stuff. I, I think they're just going to get stupid. the map out and they're going to build a point of interest and then later they're going to fill in stuff. That's stupid. Then they should just stick with the current map and add more stuff to it. That's what I would, that's what I would rather have. I mean, look, at, yeah. look at the area between Zim's and um, Rancho de Quito. There's yeah. literally nothing there. There's a trailer park. There's a single trailer park and three and homes. There's a, yeah, there, there's a few of those uh, enclosed uh, trailer park things or trailers. That's it. You know, 
like a camping area that's enclosed. They've got a few of those. The entire north side of the map. That's all they, it is. They could fill in a lot of things. They there. could throw the hospital in between that and be set. I mean, they could throw well, a town Clement in between says there. There's four houses actually. Oh no, well, there's three in a row, and then there's another four or fourth on the road. But yeah. I mean, like, come on, like that's what is that what this map expansion is going to be like? Because if it is, that's a shame. Yeah, they, well, that would be if they're filling in stuff. Take the time to fill in up there. Make it so that when there's a reason to go up there, it doesn't have to be a huge city. But even if you put something in, I mean, you could almost look at real life maps and like you take it down to scale, but like what do cities have in them? Yeah. You know, maybe it's a shopping center. You know, it could yeah. be an outlet malls. It could be, you know, it could be just things that are out in the middle of nowhere. Um, put farms up there or something, but make it so that there are houses so that when you're running I mean, across, yeah, why not like another Bumjik Farms up there? Bumjik Farms is perfect. There's nothing there, but it's content. There's th nothing really spawns there, but it's a big area. Full Could you imagine if Bumjik Farms wasn't in the game? You'd have nothing yeah. between the waste dump and Pleasant Valley on that road. Yeah. Besides well, Musty, the truck Musty said, you know, you could do abandoned bases and make it look like survivors try to build something up there. And that's kind of like that, that thing I was saying of, of, sto of story unfolding in front of you. Even if, like, if, if, you, uh, if you watch The Walking Dead, you know how they were held up in that farmhouse? I didn't watch The Walking Dead. I'm sorry. Oh, my goodness. Nick. I'm not, it, no, no, not You've never seen The Walking nope, Dead? Don't plan on it either. Oh, my goodness. You know, I'm going to show something really quick right here. This is the current map, and you can see this yellow line, this yellow road down here. It, this, is, uh, this is Averham Highway. We've got Pleasant Valley over here, Rancho de Quito up here. This entire middle part of the map, they could throw a bunch of stuff, and right now there is nothing there. I mean, you look at the southern part of the map, there's stuff all over the place. You've got, you've got the campsite, you've got the, the, the mansion development, you've got the... Um, the, the, the other developments over there, you've got the, the water tower, you've got all this stuff, and you go to the north, and it's just nothing. You have nothing between Avram Highway and Hunter Drive. Is that Hunter Drive that's up there that uh, Zims is on? I but, think so. But there's nothing there. The whole middle of the map is completely empty. I mean, just look at it. Why can't they add? They could throw a city in the middle of that and be perfectly fine. Yeah, they could say, you know, what, screw this little river that's running from Ruby Lake, and they could throw they could throw an entire city in there. Now, and this is this is, so. Like what I was getting at with The Walking Dead is they held up in a farmhouse out in the middle of nowhere. Like if you run up to houses here, you don't really feel like I was saying. You know, you don't feel like it was barricaded and lived in, and, and there's no story. Like yeah. if they could create to where that house has a unique story. And start treating the houses like let's pretend that we actually believe that people lived here, mm -hmm. that people tried to survive here, um, and create to where maybe there's unique stuff scribbled on the walls. Um, you know, th there's something you could see struggle happened here. Maybe that they were ripped out of their homes and, and, and people were killed here. You could see that something happened in that house. Uh, I, I don't get that feeling at all when I go from house to house, even the ones that are out in the middle of nowhere like that. I don't get that feeling that that anyone was there. It just seems like an abandoned house. There's nothing special about it. I know to search this, 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 and this. There's probably going to be looting these things and skip the rest yep. and then move on. Mm -hmm. I, they, they've really got to get away from this is just a place that holds loot to to move towards a place that this is a place that had a story. And I, I, I think that they're maybe they're developers or whoever. It doesn't seem like they have people that are trying to tell a story at all they're yeah. creating a game they're not telling a story and if you look at what, what some of these game developers do is they tell a story with the game and i really think that this would benefit them in this type of a game to say as they're going forward what kind of a story can we tell with this town with with this new point of interest what kind of story can we tell and get it down to the little details like this house and I think they're trying to tell a story with large points of interest, like, oh, let's do the hospital so we can tell a story with that. Let's do the quarry, the quarry or the uh, the waste dump. That tells, you know, there's some story, but but they're realistically not telling the story. They're just doing very large hints <laughs> at what happened. Uh, they're not telling a story. Yeah. So that's um, that's stuff that, that definitely needs to be worked on. So I don't know. 
I'm, I'm, you know, people are saying in chat, like, you could even add, like, you know, a wrecked plane, or wrecked helicopter. Look, remember, do you remember in, uh, DayZ? Finding a, coming, I don't know how much of the DayZ, I don't think you played any of the DayZ mod. But coming across our, some DayZ, yeah. the wrecked helicopter, I mean, that was, like, bingo. Like, yeah. oh my god, like, loot galore from the wrecked helicopters, like, stuff like that. In this but whole also, your mind fills in, like, ooh, this happened. You yeah, know, there like, was there was a helicopter right here. I mean, I'm not into the whole merge and stuff, but they just they could throw a huge air. They could throw an airfield in the middle of that map right there, and that would yeah, be that would be a perfect place for an airfield. There's Forget nothing the there. There's Spence Hills and Dragon Lake and a and a campsite. There is nothing else there. Yeah. So th something needs to happen there, and and I hope that it's not just looking at the current pleasant or the current map and just doubling it with the same open area. Because yeah. in that case, like I keep saying, useless. Stuff needs to be in there. An airfield. Daisy had, what, th two or three airfields? Yeah. The one in the north? I mean, it's just well, something Where do all have. these planes come from that keep be dropping? Yeah, the air the airdrops. Air and, I mean, they could be telling a story with that. Like, as you said, I'm totally into the immersion I'm thing. I'm not at all. I mean, I don't care about the story. But still, I just, they can add stuff. There's stuff that they can easily add that they're just not. And I'm not sure why. No, it's, it takes time. Yeah, but in, in, you know, and in turn, they're spending time on adding two little watchtowers and calling that an outpost. I mean, come on. Yeah. At some point, at, at some point, that there needs to be. They want this game to be a free to play and sustain itself on. There's not. If this is what the map is going to look like, come it's when it's free. It, it's going to be awful. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. Oh, we'll see. We'll see. So we'll, we'll see. This let's is, let's is, talk about the July second because this is the one that's coming out in two days. Yes, we we pretty much covered everything. I mean, they they now, moved the professions. Yes. I mean, that's one thing. Go. Do you want to go into the go into that? Yeah. Or? So they were talking about how they found out that the professions were much more difficult and much more, and and hopefully this is a good thing. The the fact that this happened, um, they said that they they had to move the professions to July, um, because they found that there was a lot more work involved in creating a profession system than just saying, Hey, you have this name, or, you know, you have this title and now you can have this bonus. Um, hopefully they're creating a little more of the immersion, as I say, I always call it to where maybe, you know, maybe there's something that looks different about you. I mean, they could, there's so many things they could do with this. If you're, if you're a doctor, or, you know, if you have the, the medic, um, maybe make it so you have a, a skin, you know, like you start out with something that's like hospital garb, you know, uh, I mean, there's so many things they could do that I don't think they're going to, but you know, they do have until, uh, until July to do this now. Um, so sometime next month now they'll be coming out. With this there's a problem system. here, Brian. Okay. This profession it? system is going to require a wipe. Yeah. So we know so, that a wipe's another month out. And I was really hoping this military, unless they figure out some some other way to work it in, I don't know if they're, I don't know how they're going to, but you know, this is going to require a wipe because you're going to need, it, they're going to, you're going to need to select a new character to get the access to the professions. So, you know, I thought this mil this military outpost wipe was going to be the last wipe for like a month and a half, and really let the game play out. I guess that's not going to be the case now, or unless yeah. they move. You know, I'm fine if they move the professions back until August. Or the end of July, so we have an entire month to play. Yeah. Here's the thing: don't announce the wipe. That is, they the just need to do them because look at how many people haven't played for I at least a week. I have not bothered <laughs> opening H1Z1 because I don't care because there's going to be a wipe. You know, give us two days. Like, but like right now, they give us what a week and a half. I think they should just tell us the day before. I mean, what's the point? What do we need to know for? Well, now the reason we I like to know is so that we can do some planning. I think two days is plenty of time. They do the server updates on Thursday. Yeah. Say Thursday. All right, there's going to be a wipe Tuesday. That's that, that's yeah. more than enough time. It gives you the weekend to go through, and and, and just, only if you know there's going to be a wipe. Because the problem is they say there's going to be a wipe, like and they then did. They, they moved it off more a time. Week. Yeah, and and then people end up not playing for weeks because they think there's going to be a wipe, and they're like, oh, I might as well not play because there's going to be a wipe. Our group exactly. We ha I told people in our group like, oh, why are, are you want to play? And I'm like, no. Why do I want to play? The bases are getting raided, and there's a wipe. Yeah. So just announce it on a Thursday. Do it on the Tuesday. Give it. I, I want a little notice, Brian, because I mean, we put planning into stuff, and now with our builder account, we need to have some planning done. Yeah, um, that so, is true. So having planning so is is a couple going days. To be very even yeah, as you said, if if they know that the the test build is good on that Thursday, they're, they're like, okay, this looks good. 
We know we're going to roll this out into the regular servers. All right, from Thursday to Tuesday, that's more than enough time. Yeah. So th that's what I hope they do. Um, because that's so now, just now they time. said the four military outposts are being added to the map. There's only one. But well, but the, I think they're counting the military outposts is what they put on the bridges by the major cities. Ugh. And then I don't, and I don't think they're even referencing that large military outpost. I don't know how I, they can classify that as an outpost. unless unless they're going to have four of those, maybe one between each of the major cities. Like one goes up from uh, the governor's mansion down to Pleasant Valley, yep. and then there's one along the south of the map. There's one along the east of the map between you know like Cranberry up to Rancho Ch Chiquito, and then one along that north side of the map. But then they're just filling a bunch of empty space with just loot areas. I mean, they're not doing much other than just creating loot area. Yeah. It's not, it's not going to be as useful unless, as you said, as they said in their clans create bases in there and they become hot interest points of interest. I mean, that could be possible, but they're going to have to put them out there and see what people actually do with them. Yeah. I'm not sure. I would not classify those two little watchtowers as an outpost. And, you know, I said that at the beginning of the show and I'm going to say that again, the fact that they called that outpost is, is unbelievable in my opinion. Yeah. They could have just said we're adding outposts. You know, we thought well, this was going to be this thing that brings back all of these players to H1Z1 because now there's military bases, and it turns out it's just two freaking watchtowers and uh, two broken cars. I mean, yeah, well, I understand. We'll, we'll, have to see, we'll have to see what they come up with if what they're considering four military outposts actually is what's between between the governor's mansion and, and Pleasant Valley. If if that's what it is, and they really fill it in and make it look cool. Okay, sure. Call that a military outpost, but the ones that are along the road, I hope those aren't them. Yeah, I, I really hope that those are not them. Um, again, this is we're, we're just I, I don't know. That 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 just the fact that Brain Brian, we sat here and we speculated how this is going to be the big thing for H one Z one military bases, and then yeah. I go in the test server and I'm running around with with White Tail and, and I think Musty, and it's like really, this is your outpost. Um, I mean, it's a start. Don't get me wrong, but I felt like I, I felt like I was misled, and I don't know yeah. if anybody else feels like that. I just felt like I was a little misled. Yeah, we know about well, the we'll massive. Yeah, we know about the yeah. massive outpost, but they said but they're right adding now four. it's very empty. I mean, you showed the video there. It's yeah. just a surrounding with some watchtowers around it. It'll be interesting to see how they fill that in. Yeah, I mean, they said there's going there's going to be stuff in there. There's going to be, and I'm glad they hosted that pre patch live stream because I would have sat here and said, well, that's stupid. But there's going to be tents and buildings and stuff in there. So that's one. But where are the other three? Yeah. So 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 those are so they're saying in chat like Musty's saying that's checkpoint. So those are checkpoints outside of the towns, and then they have the actual yeah full military well, larger ones. Well, well, I guess we'll have to wait until Thursday and see where those are. Because that's really yep. what it's going to come down to. Um, let's go into uh, some screenshots from our, uh, our our favorite guy, Sebastian uh, Crow, Crow, yep. Crow's Empire. Uh, he added some really cool screenshots this week. Uh, I'm going to try to again, not the biggest screenshots, so I'm going to I'm going to do my best to try to try to blow this up here. But Brian, he added some medical stuff to the game. And I'm yeah. uh, showing that so on screen gonna, right now. What's going to be filling the hospital? Yeah, uh, the first object is one of those rolling beds that you would see in like an emergency room. Um, yeah. The next thing is the hospital doors, typical hospital doors, a handle on one side, a push on the other. The third picture is like a rolling IV cart. Uh, then we go down to the bottom, and there's just a, it looks like a chair, some some type of carts, and some other miscellaneous objects. We've got those. Um, if you know in those double hospital rooms, how you've got those dividers that break up the separating curtains. The separating curtains. That's pretty much what those are. The fourth item or the fifth item, I have no clue what that is. Um, it looks like hand, hand railings. That's what it looked like. Along the walls. Ra yep, railings, and then there's just a few other textures in there. Not the highest quality screenshot, but it gives us some insight into what what kind of stuff we're expecting to see um, inside the game. Um, so that's going to be good for that. Lots of lots of dynamic content in this. He wants hospital. you to control zoom in. I did zoom in. That's as far as it's, <laughs> it's going to go. It's not going to. It's not going to get any clearer. No. I, so, I, so this is something important for me. We I always talk, you know we've been talking a lot about immersion today, but um, if you look at like a movie, um, twenty eight days later, um, you look at the very beginning of The Walking Dead. Um, 
No spoilers. A lot of, well, a lot of <laughs> these things all start out in a hospital. Like, let's say somebody, um, somebody is, gets knocked unconscious, something happens, and they wake up, and then the world around them is chaos. So for, for us, that we associate like that hospital bed with a whole story like that. And so I think I think them coming up with these things to where they could use it for storyline. I mean, I think that's awesome. And and it, for us, it's kind of like a throwback to a lot of the really awesome zombie movies that we really enjoy. So I think as they create more and more things, um, and now they just need to make it look real. Yeah. You know, it, it can't just be some random. I I just it needs to be to where you go in there and it feels real. Well, we'll see what they do. Um, it looks like the hospital's in good hands. Yeah. It, it seems like it's he's, going he's to He's their be. art director, I think. I believe so. so. Sebastian is. And he looks like he's going to filling this hospital to the brink with stuff. This is not just going to be three empty floors with nothing in them. Yeah. But, yeah, I want to even see cool stuff. Like, you know, the, the, the lights in the hospital, those tube lights. Like, I want to see those hanging from the ceiling. Like, just yeah. stuff like that, where this is, like, a really broken down, beat up place. Yeah. Um, the next thing, Ryan, is something fun. Not every day you see something like this in H1Z1. There was a wedding. I believe this is the first official oh. H1Z1 wedding, and I sent this to Brian. I was so excited, but unfortunately, I was unable to attend. Well, he was, <laughs> you, were, you were saying, oh, it's, like, a 1.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> you know, this is going to be I said our clan. Pacific. I said our clan can go. This is going to be great. You know, infection will stop by. Just, you know, the, I'm not into the whole role-playing thing, but this yeah. was just, like, a cool, like, hey, and it was our old, it was a server we used to play on. So this was, like, a, this was, like, an infection event we were going to make it out of. But uh, there was a, a church, there was a wedding at the PV Church, on June 27th, on Bloodscorn, on Blood yeah, Scorn. that was Blood Saturday, Scorns. at one thirty a.m. Pacific. Uh, I had graduation the next day, so I was unable to attend the wedding. Um, there was an open bar after the, afterwards, and pretty much you just had to bring your own bear steak uh, for... As a wedding gift. As a wedding gift for the bride and groom. And then there was a post reaction uh, posted by... I don't know if it was the same user. It was a different user. No, it was someone else. Um, the bride and groom never showed up. There were 30 people there, which Old is feet. really cool. Um Cold feet. Uh, they were around. There was like twenty-five. There was like thirty people there. They were there for like twenty-five minutes. There's a few screenshots here that I'm gonna get. I'm that I'm gonna pull up, uh, and you can see this is actually really cool that this was working. Um, like there's um, all these people sitting in the pews, and everybody looks like they're ready to go. There's like a, what you would, like a priest standing up at the altar, um, and then Mazel Tov, uh, Mazel Tov came out, <laughs> <laughs> and then. I guess you could say it could have been a Jewish one. Who knows? Mazel Tov. And then uh, there were some Molotov cocktails out. And then it was just a bloodbath. Everybody was on fire. Um, and that was it. And that was the official H1Z1 wedding. <laughs> yeah. Didn't exactly work. It worked out a lot like the uh, wow weddings that people tried to have. It's, it would have worked perfectly in the bride and groom. 25 minutes without the, all those people killing each other? That's great. Come on. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they pretty much sat there and they wanted it to happen so badly. And uh, <laughs> just makes you wonder, you know, why the people didn't show up. I know. I mean, that's so that I would, I really wish I could have attended 25 people, 30 people at 1 30 a.m. Pacific. Yeah. I, I look at the time. I was like 2 30 a.m. Sorry, man. Yeah. I was. I just can't do it. I, I was. Bed. I would have. I would have loved if they did it in the middle of the day, and the and our clan could have gone. That would have been a lot of fun. Yeah. I, well, I was suspicious when they said 1:30 a.m. <laughs> I'm like, why would they announce it as 1:30 a.m.? Like, who? Well, obviously these people show up. Obviously but. 30 people. I mean, that, that that's. I bet you that server was medium pop from all those people yeah. on. I'm surprised nobody came with a gun and killed them all. Well, somebody came with a Molotov. I think a lot of people them. had the Molotov, and then they just, like, I think the people just brought them. And then I, I guess... They were, they were finally like, all right, this is enough. Yeah, like, I guess... I don't know. Oh, well. I bet you the mic <laughs> spam during that was very high quality. 30 people oh, in the no. church trying to talk all at the same time. All right. Um, more, and back to more serious. I, you know, I felt the need to throw that in there. That, 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 was, yeah. that was a cool community thing. Um. Let's back. Let's go back to bears, Brian. Currently, as it sits, with bears, 
there is <laughs> if, if you run across them <laughs> you're you're shit out of luck it. it's just yep. there's no hope you might as well just click respawn there's there's li- there's literally no hope um i mean they did slightly change it to where if you could run up on something it wasn't a guaranteed kill but if you're on the middle of a field and and you can't reach uh, like a platform of some sort even if you went into a building it used to be the bear would clip through the wall even if you jumped up on top of things, the bear would then clip through the floor. Uh, you know, bears have always been a death sentence. And so what they're doing is giving you a warning system with the bear. Kind of like what you would get in real life. Bears don't just instantly start charging. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's changing. So I believe, uh, I don't know if the information is on here, but yeah. So at 25, 25 meters, meters. Yeah, go ahead. So what, at 25 meters, the bear is going to stand up and growl at you to give you a warning that you're coming within his, his area. Um, and then once you're 15 meters away, um, they will start to, to do that charge at you. Um, now, they're saying that these are no longer going to jump around like they did before, like the wolves would jump around. They're saying that the bear will stay um, in front of you. But for me, the wolves still a lot of times seem very glitchy, like they still don't seem to stay in front of you. So we'll see. They, they claim that the wolf is now fixed. So um they're saying that it won't be jumping around and then you can actually outrun a bear. So they say that your sprint is faster than the bears. Um, so that once you get a hundred meters away that it will be, uh, it loses aggro. Yeah. Um, now that your let's see their run speed is higher than your before your run, their run speed was higher than your sprint speed. So you were screwed. And if you aggroed a bear, unless you had a gun, you were screwed. That's, that's yeah. as simple as it was. Yep. And so now, if you can, you can outrun the bear, you can get away, and it's not get guaranteed death. Because it, it was very frustrating when you're fully geared. Um, I would sit there and try to turn around and take shots at the bear, but it would charge you every time, and it takes a huge portion of your health every time it hits you. Yeah. And you don't have time to bandage. I mean, there's just nothing you could really do short of getting a lucky headshot. Or having a teammate come by and kill them. But yeah. it's now I mean, nice. We, that... we would do the thing where you'd run in a circle around somebody, and then they'd shoot the bear. Yeah. I mean, that worked, but if, if, you know, this is a much better system or hop like, oh, up there's on a, a bear, I'm going to avoid it or hop up on a deck foundation or something to, or a ground tamper to try to get away from it. Yeah. Um, so that's, so this, this is going to be a lot better. Yeah. I mean, they, but they need to do this to where all the animals are more realistic, like the wolves, you know, how does a wolf really react once it comes around people is going to instantly just start charging you, um, yeah, I think that getting that the real animal feel of what it's really going to do, like this, they finally looked at it and say, oh, well, you know, why do we have the bear doing this? What does a bear really do? Mm-hmm. And then make it do that. You know, what does a deer really do? What does a wolf really do? You know, kind of put that in there. And like, when are they going to add dogs? Yeah, as pets. I mean, when are you going to be able to? Are you going to be able to tame I mean, them? Yeah. I mean, imagine if they added well, why, dogs. Why not cats? Wild dogs. I mean, cats. Yeah. Wow. I guess Streets. you need food. Street cats. <laughs> Yeah, you get hungry, you can go... Uh, Brian, that's kill some cats. we're going to get a PETA infraction now. <laughs> well, okay, cats. People can tame cats, but cats are, are not very tameable. I disagree. I have a house cat. Yeah. <laughs> so if you get... I mean, that's one thing, is if they could... If once they get animals figured out in this game, you know, start bringing in a dog that you could train and it assists you. Maybe it helps you find things. Like if there's some sort of resource or, or something that you try to find, um, maybe it helps you track down people. Like, bo- track- like bones, I mean? I mean, dogs that track down some bones? Or or maybe, let's say, you need for hunting, like if you're going to track down a certain animal and you need a certain type of meat or skin to All make right. a certain type of item, you can train a dog that helps you track down that animal to be able to kill it. Maybe it's a rare animal in the world. I mean, yeah. I, I just think of a lot of things they could do. I, that's, I, that's one way to make it useful. I I like the idea. I'm just, I don't know. It's, I, I feel like now I'm playing Minecraft when you talk about taming dogs. Like, that's instantly what I think. Like, I'm just being honest with you. Like, I just don't think serious survival game when I think about dogs. Because here's yeah. the thing. When you log out, what is that dog going to do? Does it log out with you or does it stay in the world? No, it's, you, it'd probably be something that is attached to you. So, so when you log out, the dog also logs if out. If you train it, it then becomes attached to you. It's no longer a world animal. It becomes your pet. So when you log out, then it would go out with you is what you're saying? Yes. So okay. when you log back in, and it has the possibility to die. If it dies or you die, you lose that animal. Creates a, this is where I'm trying to create a thing where 
you know, if there's the, that risk of dying and losing something other than a gun. Like something you actually worked for that time. Here's the thing. If the doc, for men is saying in chat, they needs to defend the base. If that's the case, then they need to make it like arc where the players stay, stay locked around. In. Because, I but mean, this would be something. I mean, if you could train a bear, if you could train, you know, or at least tame a bear or get a bear, like you could put it in a, in like a guard area, mm -hmm. you know, and then it's something that is persistent. That, I mean, that would be kind of cool. Yeah. Why not horses for riding? Seriously, that'd be great in terms of cars. Yeah. I just think that they're worried about making it look real. What, but horses? some of their other games have horses, right? I mean, their EverQuest games had to have, have horses. I don't, those are really old compared to what they have now, so they can't exactly pull those things over. <laughs> yeah, they're not just going to pull the model from the, the EverQuest from 1999's the horse model yeah, into the just, game. It's just like straight legs. Yeah, yeah wonderful. Exactly real. Yeah. I like, I like the idea of having animals in the game, but I, they need to figure out the right way to implement them. Right? Because yes. like, the dogs are going to make no... The dog, they need to have a... Like we always talk about this. They need to have the end game element, and the dogs need to have and that. And that's as well. that's what I'm saying is, and that's what I'm tr kind of trying to unfold is, this is a possible, like, here's a use for the dogs. Here's something to have happen. Um, here's something that will unfold when you have a dog. You now have the ability to do this. Mm -hmm. That is is like, is is more that end game characteristic of all right. And then maybe with whatever you gather, whatever you make from what you caught with that dog. Uh, you have the ability to do something else. I mean, make it to where the crafting system isn't just, I have the ability to make this one thing. If I die, I'll, I'll just make it again instantly. Like, make it a little bit of work. Yeah. I, I mean, that's one thing. Is I, I just keep saying, make it harder. And, and it'd be a lot of people freak out about that. I'm not saying make the whole game harder to where you're guaranteed to die, but make it harder to where you want to live. Yeah. Yeah. You know, make it to where make it to where that guy he's not going to risk coming in and just kill trying to kill everyone he sees because he runs the risk of losing everything he has as well. And that's the key, right? You right need now, to you need to decide if they die. You need to decide there needs to be that 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 cost and that that cause and effect thing. Like, do I want to engage? Right. I mean, right yeah. now, like like we always right now everybody always oh, go okay, let's go engage. Yeah, who who, yeah, who cares? What, what, what are you gonna? I, what am I risking to lose by engaging? Five that's five, what I, five bullets and a halfway you know durability three hundred eight and a and a blue backpack. I mean, that that's what you're running around with. But that's the thing. It, make it so that when you die, you lose that dog. You lose something yeah. that you worked a while to craft. You know, something whatever it is, you risk losing that. And there's actually going to be like I don't want to lose this, so I'm gonna maybe avoid this confrontation, uh, you know, and make it, make, make it harder like that. And I, I think that that would bring in a lot of people just playing for the sake of, I want to see how long I can survive right now. People don't play to see how long they can survive. I, yeah. I don't see anybody doing that. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. Like, like you said, they need those like, rare items and stuff that like you have to work for. Yeah. Because right now they, like you said, they don't exist. So, yeah. um, let's see what else. So, um, Brian, we've got a few new items. Is that, that that's what this thing is, right? We've got some new items that we can take a look at. So yeah, we, we haven't found the rendered versions, but these are some new icons of just some things. So it's actually a, a series of images. So do you, you want to go, th go through one? Yeah, so I'll, go, I'll go pull, pull it up, up and I'll let you just say next and whatever else and we'll go through them and you can narrate over them. Okay, so let me, uh, I got to find where I'm at here. So this first one <laughs> is the shoe. So I actually put the shoe in the top part because the image was so small, but I wanted you to see the actual close-up of what's on the shoe uh, because you, you see these little images and you can't really see what they are. So this is a a shoe that has a dragon along the side. So, uh, you, you know, you can really see they have the dragon and then there's the in-game icon for it. So that, that's the new item that they don't actually have the 3D models for, so you can't quite see those yet. So uh, this next one is a shirt that's coming in. So I actually put the graphic of what's on the shirt separately. Yeah. Um, and if, if you look, it's a shirt that has some sort of a flaming skull looks like a monkey skull or something on it um and and that's that's pretty much what the shirt is it's a tank top 
So, yeah, that's a very small image here. Yeah. Uh, this next one is like a, what do they call that? A floral? Oh, I'm trying to I don't know. It's not a floral, but I'm trying to remember the term for it. But it's it's some little short shorts, and I didn't have. I'm glad that Ferment didn't render these for me again because they're not on a mail. Um, but yeah, they're just some little green, like a floral type, decorative floral pants. Yes. Uh, um, this next one is a Rastafari. uh, Rasta Rastafarian backpack. That's that thing looks cool. I give it's you that. It's actually uh, someone pulled up a real life image of a backpack that that seems like they copied this from for the most part. <laughs> uh, hey, so, hey, whatever, man. Yeah. So look, actually I'm going to pull up Rasta backpack and I'm assuming like the first Google images are just going to be. So, yeah. So on the first page of Google image, I'm going to pull up this image and then I'll link it to yeah, you. Go ahead. So, I mean, kind of close. <laughs> If you like. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's like the the that's the Rastafarian look. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the colors, are all pretty close. I mean, it's you know maybe they took that into account when they made hey, that. You know, this. It, it getting new items and you know you know that you know what that tells me, Brian. It tells me that they didn't spend a whole lot of time on it, which is fine. Yeah, which I mean, is pretty perfectly much said, fine. It's like a Rasta backpack. That's okay. This is a Perfect. rough sketch. That's that, that, that's all, that's all you need, right? You don't need to spend. You don't need to have your art guy spending a week and a half on a backpack. P model it off Google. It, perfect. I love it. Yeah. So that, I mean, that is that, that is the uh, Rasta backpack, and then we have this new. It's like a blue. What is a snowflake pattern? I don't know. I it don't. It's a weird. I mean. It, when they're just taking like fractal type of, of patterns and yeah. then making, uh, what do you call it? I, I, I don't it's know. Almost, I don't but know. it's blue and white. And it kind of resembles like if snowflakes were continuous, <laughs> that's what it would be. Yeah. So there, that, that's like a, I don't even know, to be honest with you. It's like a, a snow. It literally, it's just like, like snow. Yeah. Snowflakes. So, so that is, yeah, so that's the, the blue and it's a ski mask. Mm -hmm. Um, and then after that, it was kind of a cool ski mask. It's, it's a gray ski mask that has kind of like that Joker painted on lips, the Joker know, like smiley smile. face. Yeah. And, and then a target on the head. So, uh, that's a pretty cool, um, that's a pretty cool one. So that one would be more like what I would want than a Rasta backpack. Yeah. So that, that's some, there's some new assets in the game yep. and um, there, there's a few other ones too. Um, but that, that's for the most part, that's pretty much it in terms of assets into the new. I just, I just kind of pulled game. out some ones that caught my eye. Yeah. Um, so they're adding new stuff unique. every week. Um, but just the, the images are so low to sit here and go through all of them. It's just, they're not, yeah. they're not high enough quality to sit here and go through all of them. Um, now, one thing they did mention in the stream is that they are redoing backpacks. So backpacks are going to be pretty much one size or another. Like they're going to be the size that military backpacks are, and then there's regular backpack sizes. Yeah. So that's, that's one thing where they don't go through and make, um, you know, you have your, your regular backpacks, then you have this size military backpack, and then you have this larger military backpack. It sounds like they're simplifying the backpack system. Which is good. Um, so now going into just some general stuff here, Brian, there will be daybreak uh, general server maintenance uh, tomorrow, July 1st at 7 a.m. Pacific. So that's like 10 a.m. Eastern that they'll be doing that update. So this will affect login for all games, uh, all of the websites across daybreak uh, and forms what may be impacted. So you may have an issue logging into the game uh, tomorrow and, you know, two to four hours for that. So just keep that away if you're trying to log in. So It'll just... be the day before a patch. So I wonder if people, if there's going to be a lot of people on going and wasting resources or well, if it's going to be really light. We don't, I don't even know who has resources to waste at this point. Yeah. Um, so there's actually, they also talked about new crates, Brian, for BR. Yes. They're going to be discontinuing the current BR crate. Yep. And they're replacing that with a just just a new BR crate. So that's yes. something else to look forward to. So that'll be nice. Um, 
you know, it'll be interesting to see what they have in there. First of all, making it so that the previous items become rare to where maybe they get some value on Steam, right? Mm -hmm. The Steam Marketplace. And then add some new, these, uh, new items to the market. There's probably tons of leftover items from these first ones that really need to get out there. As they bring on new players, make it so that those 30 shirts that we have, the 30 shirt skins, mm -hmm. we can start unloading them on some of the new people that have, if that have purchased um, all of these, all of, you know, like this $10 sale they had. Yeah. Uh, that'd be a perfect opportunity for us to start unloading tons of those skins and then bring a lot of these new skins in. You know, these ones that we're showing on here, uh, we've been seeing a lot of skins, but they, so far they haven't had where they're going to release them yet. Uh, and I'm sure that this crate is going to have a lot of those skins we've been showing. Yeah. Um, now there's a few more skins that were put up in the unofficial patch notes, Brian, uh, some military mm -hmm. stuff here. So like uh, this first one right here is just the military tent. And then there's different variations with it open and closed. And yep. there's some other variations on that as well. Um, so there is some new stuff in there. Uh, you just have to, the, the link will be in the show notes to go through all of that. Like the, the bunk bed is in there um, yeah. and stuff like that. So you can, you can go through all that stuff. Like for example, here is, here's a quick look at the bunk beds, what that looks like. Kind of hard to see against the gray background. But um, yeah. But that's what the bunk beds look like. So that's some new stuff that we would expect to see in this in outpost. in all those outposts that we yes. keep talking about. Um, so that will be in there, and that will be good. Uh, hopefully, that'll be all in there and 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 ready to go. Um, yep. let's see what else do we have here, Brian? Um, Adam Clegg put out a very interesting tweet today. Um, and I think it just shows some frustration that he has. Uh, the, the, the tweet, whole Reddit system? Yeah, the, the, his tweet says, I'll never understand Reddit. They want you to communicate with them, but as soon as you, uh, as soon as you open up and talk, they downvote you. And that's, yeah. you know, that's just part of Reddit. That is the Reddit. I mean, I post this show on Reddit. Well, after it's uploaded, post the YouTube link. Yeah. And it's instantly downvoted. Like, why are you instantly downvoting this? Like, well, like what is... I, it seems like there's an automatic instant. Like, people have created bots. Because the second you post something, someone has already downvoted it before... Yeah. I mean, before I, anyone would have had time to click. Yeah, and, it, and it's, it's not even like people that are like, you know, if you don't agree with something... Like, I don't downvote stuff. Like, I don't agree... I'm not going to downvote... I'll comment if I, if I disagree. But I'm just going to sit there and downvote it. And yeah. that, that's just completely counterproductive. But, but I don't know, it's just interesting to see his frustration with it because that pre-patch live stream was perfect, right? They talked about yeah. all their stuff, and, and that's what they needed to do. And they needed to say, all right, this is what's going on with the weather system. This is what's going on with the military outpost. We're adding new stuff, but it's not done, with, it's not done in art yet and all that other stuff. So um, that's what they needed to do, and, and I'm glad they did that. Yeah. Um, so just interesting to see his frustration with that. Now, we've got one more thing, Brian, that we do here before tips of the week, and uh, that is current players versus last week and um i think i think it's over brian the 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 peaks yeah, the, that we saw with h1z1 i believe we have seen the last of it this the sales. is the summer sale is over for day, for h1z1 and it's being affected right now the current player online status sits at 8831 and the 24 hour peak almost 11000 at 10745 players and you can just yeah. look at the graph. This is last Wednesday, 15,000. Last Thursday, 13,000. Friday, 12. You know, Saturday, 12. Sunday, 12. One. Uh, so the Monday, 29th and today, like they're low. Yeah, 11,000 on Monday and then what was, today, 10,000. 5,000 something, right? Um, and, man, the, that jump is, is pretty incredible. Well, <laughs> the, you know. The jump is incredible, but the pro I think the problem is right now our group groups are not playing this game. I don't think. I think you have a lot of groups that are just saying, you know, we're just waiting. And and in fact, the Joe was saying in chat, he said they shouldn't have said uh, they shouldn't have said anything about the wipes, you know, two weeks before they did it. Now I think that's also the problem because I don't bother logging on each one z one, and I and I think yeah. they're the same, and our entire clan is the same. Yeah, when you know that there's nothing to build for, like there's nothing to build towards, it's just. It's very frustrating. Yeah. And I, I think that a lot, and I, and I look at the numbers of not just our clan, but look at the numbers of every other clan because I'm friends with a lot of the other clans that are out there. Um, and I see that their usual players are not playing. A lot of the people that were hardcore H1Z1 people are not playing right now. And so 
that's really where they're going to have to draw those people back and mm -hmm. they're going to have to give them something to play for. And then obviously they're, they're interested in the game. I and mean, we've got people in our chat here for the show that haven't been playing for weeks, but they still come and listen to the show. They're still interested in the game, but I think they're just waiting for, all right, when some of them, they probably each have this one thing that they're really waiting for to be fixed. Like some people say when the hacking is not an issue, I'll come back. Or maybe some people say when the, the building system is fixed, I'll come back. When, when the clan system is fixed, I'll come back. There's so many people that have whatever it is they're passionate about, whatever it is they're frustrated with the most in the game. That's what's not making them come back. Yeah. And so I think if they could get, they need to start breaking each of those things down. You know, get the clan system implemented. Get the building system fixed. Um, you know, get it to where. I, I heard some complaints that oh, you know, this ten dollars sale brought a lot of the hackers back, and I kind of guessed that that might happen. Um, I don't know if it was really true, but you know, I just saw some people on Reddit making comments like that. And of course, it's Reddit, so you never know. Yeah, it's um, it's, it's it's the vocal major. It's the the vocal minority, but you know, they're the ones that are talking. Uh, so. You know, I don't know. I think come this. I think, you know, see, but the problem is we know there's going to be another wipe with professions. So, you know, you're in this same yeah. boat. If they, if they, so the July roadmap. How much do you want to work in that month of building? Well, we don't even know if it's going to be a month. We need to wait for that July roadmap to come out, which I would, I was hoping it would be out by today, and it's still not out. Um, I, I'm, I mean, I can check again just to double check, but as of the start of the show, it was not out, and it yeah. doesn't appear that it's out yet. But, you know, if we if we sit down there and we look at that roadmap and we see, oh, hey, uh, you know, let's see, what's a Tuesday? July 21st is going to be professions. That's three weeks. Yeah. Not even three weeks. So, you know, that's just stuff that we need to watch out for because our group has not played in two weeks because we knew there was a wipe coming up. And plus, you know, dealing with all the hackers and constantly getting raided and no clipped into and, and aimbot and whatever, whatever else was just unplayable but knowing yeah. the wipe it was like well who cares well when I, when I played this week I pretty much played I just went solo I went into Pleasant Valley because we talked last week about I, I'd made the comment that it's too easy to get geared up within a short period of time mm -hmm. so I went to see how geared could I get in an hour you know I got to where I had a military backpack I had 30 something AR or 308 rounds um, you know, I had a helmet, I had all camo, everything. Um, you know, I had a couple different kinds of guns it, within an hour. How, I mean, how much more geared besides getting a military backpack can you get yeah, that, in I mean, this that's game? Pre that's pretty much it. That and a gun. I mean, that is the peak of the game within an hour. And I even spent around, you know, I was running around with some guy and was making bullets for him. And, you know, <laughs> that slowed me down from what, I would have normally, you know, it could have been, been easily 30 minutes or less that I could have gotten fully geared to the peak of what you can get in this game. Um, that for me is not enough. You know, I need it to where if I'm going to go out and spend two or three hours playing the game, I don't want it to be that in the first 30 minutes I'm, I'm as far as you can go and the rest of the time I'm just playing to see how long I can hold it. Yeah, I'm pretty, I mean, that's pretty much it. It's gear up for half an hour, 45 minutes, and then stay alive for two hours. And that's, yeah. it's, it's a constant cycle. And so you're just going like a little, okay, now let's see how long till I die. And like the frustrating thing is with that, you know, I have some guy come up to, you know, who's like, oh, don't shoot me. You know, I don't, I don't have, I don't have anything. Um, and then he comes around the corner and shoots me with a shotgun. And that that's happened like, to you? That's a, yeah. Oh, nice. It's like, it's like, that's for me, that's kind of frustrating because he, he doesn't fear having anything to lose. You know, he's willing to do that. Like that's the kind of stuff. And I know I keep going back this. It, the DayZ mod, your stuff was so rare that you didn't always kill on site. You you saw people running, you would just run the other direction because yeah. you didn't want to risk losing all your food and your water and your backpack and your guns. You were yeah. like, hey, I don't want any part of you. You know, hey, hey, what's going on? Nope, you're friendly. Okay, I'll go my way. You'll go your way, and then you're done. There's not this, hey, I'm friendly. Turn around. I mean, it happened, but not to the not to the extent that it happens in H1Z1. Yeah. And that's the thing is, is he says they're rewarding people for dying. I mean, right now, it, people feel like if they can trick you enough, they'll get all your stuff. Um, you and know, in that and, case, it's like the stuff that they're getting, they already have. 
Like yeah. how many and more like, bullets him, do like, you need? The, I mean, he, he had shotgun rounds. He's just running around just for the sake of killing people. And uh, th this is my fear is that that is the goal of this game is to make it. I, I, we're all for kill on sight. I mean, anyone who knows infect, infected infection clan and the infected clan tag knows that we are all about kill on sight. Oh, 100 percent. And so I have nothing, no issue with kill on sight. But when the goal is just to trick people so that you can kill them just to get a laugh out of it, and there's no, you know, you're not worried about anything that you lose. Like, we kill on sight to protect our stuff. Yeah. Because that's what this game has turned into. We don't kill people for the, well, some people kill people for the fun of killing them. But we kill it because if we let you get any closer, you're probably going to try to shoot us. Hey, yeah, you're going to trick us. You're going to do the same thing. Hey, I'm friendly. Okay, all right, you let him go. And then, you and know. So, and so we make no, no ifs, ands, or buts about being friendly or not. Hey, you know, if you come over here, you risk being shot. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's pretty much how we lay it out. We don't say, hey, yo, come over here. Well, you know, let me give you something. Bang, you're dead. Yeah. We don't do that stuff. And it's just, for me, that's really weird. And you, And if you can get it to where there is that risk of dying, there is that loss. And, and if they come to you, close enough to you to try to trick you, they run the risk of being shot themselves. So they're probably going to stay back yeah. and not run that risk. Make that hard enough. And I think that that would really make the killing on site go down just like it does, you know, in, in some of these harder DayZ mods to where people are working groups and they say, Hey, yo, someone shot at us, you know, and your big goal is to not get shot and try to figure out where that's coming from so you can escape, you know, and that becomes 15, 20 minutes of just figuring out how to do that. That's more fun than, um, you know, some guy shot at me, I'm going to log out and let's go, you know, or I'm just going to run at him and, and either one of us is going to die. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. I, you, you hit you hit the nail right in the head with that, Brian. It, there's and I think Nisco hit it pretty good there. There, there, you're, you're getting rewarded for dying, and I think that's pretty yeah. accurate. There's there's nothing in this game that is rare enough besides a worn letter. That's about it. That's worth still, not dying for. But then I can again, get with all that stuff from the worn letter, other than other than the military backpack, I pretty much get and, and, and all an that hour stuff. in PV. So it, or less, yeah. Yeah. So you know, I I don't know. I mean. But, I, you know, Brian, we can sit here, and I don't like doing this. I don't like sitting here and talking about stuff and not having a solution. And honestly, I don't know what the solution is. I don't know how... To, the game they is not... They have to change the whole feel of the game. They're not going to, though. That's the process. problem. When, when they're, first of all, being on Reddit, catering to troll mentality... It's 100% you know? trolls. That's who's playing the game. There's 40,000 subscribers on Reddit. Trolls. That, and, that's and what so it is. I, I think that if you got to the more of... These are survival... And like if, if you cater to the audience, um, not to the trolls, the audience is people that enjoy survival games. And I think that they've lost all those people that enjoy survival games and the trolls are left. They really need to find a way to drive out the trolls, bring back in the people that want true survival game, and, and then people will enjoy playing again. All right. Um. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Troll, I mean, trolls, I mean, trolls how, everywhere. How yeah. they do that? They're going to have to figure that out. But that's and, and that's the progression system. You know, Nisco said. You know, from it, mentioned that if you had a progression system that gave you that risk, maybe that over time you were able to build up. You know, you get a, a, a uh, boost on your sprint. You get a little more HP to where you're less likely to die. You know, make it so that if you survived a long time, you're harder to kill. Yeah. To, to where you'll keep your stuff. And make it the people that are constantly killing and 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 uh, die a lot, never quite have what you have because they haven't survived. I mean, make it to where that is progression. I mean, Brian, I said it two weeks ago. I think when while I was playing this game throughout the last two weeks, I was running geared from one base to another, alt tabbed out of the game yeah. because I just didn't care if I died. I didn't have anything on me where I, I had a gun and a few and a few rounds of ammo. I mean, yeah. I was literally playing the survival game all tab, and I know I'm not the only one that does that, because it's like whatever. Yeah, if I if I'm dead when I get back, well. Yeah, and and you know I've got multiple monitors, so I can see what's going on in the game. But I'm browsing the internet. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Reddit. I'm doing something on the other screen, because yeah. I'm just sitting here like whatever. I, you know, the map is so empty. There's nothing here. I just kind of line myself up in the right direction, and I'll end up where I want to be. Yeah. And that's scary. It shouldn't be like that. I would I would never, never, alt tab out in Daisy. Yeah, because you you all talk about you're dead, and there's people around you're dead. You have to sneak around that map and sneak around that game. 
Yeah. I mean, now here's the problem: the zombies then, aren't a threat. The zombies don't do. You, the zombies don't kill you in this game. The NPCs are a joke. And and the same thing with the players. Well, There's no threat. One thing I really enjoyed about DayZ: the feeling of okay, I got a ghillie suit, you know, and I'm going up on this mountain, and I'm I'm gonna hide out here. I'm gonna watch for people passing by. And I'm going to try to snipe at some people. You don't have that feeling of this game because if you're standing up on the side of a mountain, people can see you. It doesn't matter if you lay down. Unless you're inside of a bush, people can see you. Yeah. Uh, so it's not that same feeling of, all right, I'm going to get all camoed up. I'm going to get all this gear that, you know, and I'm going to get this gun that's hard to get. And I'm going to lay down here and I'm going to snipe and I'm going to be able to control this area. You don't have that same feeling in this game because it, even if you have camel gear and you're on the side of a mountain, someone just shoots you from below and you die. I mean, you know, it's, they have as much chance of killing you as you have of killing them, um, regardless of whether you're in camo or not. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's just not quite the same. Yeah. So we'll have to see what happens. Um, but I hope that change will be soon. I feel like we're, we're beating a dead horse here because it's yeah. just, I feel like we just keep saying the same thing over and over again, but that's how important it is. And that's how passionate we are about this kind of stuff changing. Because some, yeah. some, some, I've said, I've probably said it 30 times a show. Something has to change. And it's not yeah. because I'm not paying attention. It's because something has to, I don't know what else to say. Something has to change. There needs to be a drastic change in this game or it will not sustain its, its projected free to play model. Yeah. I, well, I, I don't mean, even know what to I say. I don't know. I mean, I look at CSGO. I mean, look at how many trolls play CSGO. They can't, I guess they probably can't sustain the game. Not that it's going to be a game you want to play, but you know the people in CS:GO. I mean, look at all their their names. They're all fake names with usually offensive pictures. <laughs> it's just a bunch of, and they're all just trash talking the whole time, yeah. shooting each other over and over again. And if they that's what they want this game to turn into, and just that's what it's going to turn continue, into. Continue, let it continue going down that path. They have to make that decision: Do we want this to be a game that's for normal people or for those people? I and, still think. I still think there's time for them to do a 180 and say this game is not going to be free to play. I still yeah. think that there's time. Not much, but there is still time. And if there's anybody listening to this from Daybreak right now, seriously consider Please. doing this. Because this game is going to be a thou every person having three accounts, logging out with all your gear, and there's never going to be anything in the game to play. Well, to even, if it's, even if it's not free to play, it, make it so you have to pay for something. And then you can, you know, if you want to get some stuff to get more skins. And like if there's some sort of a pay model, if you want to get more skins that you can get through the game. But all, if you want to fast pass to be able to get these skins, sure. Charge me 20 40 $60 but, one time to play to get into the game, like a AAA release. That would be fine. And I think a lot of people yeah. would buy into that. Yeah. The problem is going to be, like you said, Brian, the trolls. Yep. And, and they, they've got to get... Make it, yeah, make it count, cost something to create an account just so that you don't have, first of all, little kids. <laughs> um, and, then, and then you don't have the people that are creating 20 accounts and trolling everybody. Uh, time will tell, Brian, time will tell. Um, no. that, that show really went down in the dumps real quick. That was, <laughs> that was just, we were, we were all this positive energy and it just... I mean, everything was good. And then it's, just, was it's just... And then we started saying, oh, but what about this? It's real, it's real <laughs> depressing right now. S so I've got a hockey game tonight, so we, we've got to actually move um, so I can get out to my game. So let's, let's, uh, let's move on to tips of the week. So these tips, we have a beginner tip and we have an advanced tip. Uh, the beginner tip is something that the first day player, maybe people have been playing for a month. Uh, you know, this is a tip that maybe you haven't run into, something you haven't done, but it'll be something that helps your gameplay. The advanced tip is usually going to be something that once you've built up your character and you build up a, maybe a base or something um, that you will actually have, uh, get, get a benefit out of that, of, of something that will protect you or will help you along the way. So let's go ahead and go into our tips of the week. All right, so for our beginner tip, um, this is something that, you know, for people that have been playing a while, you may take this for granted. Um, but I noticed not everybody does this. 
for me, I pick up every single shirt, hat, you know, whatever it is that's cloth, I pick it up along the way. Um, uh, you'll, you'll soon realize that, especially with being around a lot of zombies, that you need a lot of bandages. Um, or perhaps you're running around and you aren't finding that backpack. You know, backpacks can be somewhat rare if you're not looking in the correct areas. So uh, you can make a satchel out of this. So pick up and then shred every single shirt and hat that you can find. Um, so, you know, I go through and I'll just, I'll have tons of hats, a whole bunch of shirts. And once I, once the size is getting a little bit too much, I'll start shredding down those because those are a hundred um, slots each for the shirts. Start shredding those down, get a stack of uh, bandages and then, you know, create, create all of like 10 bandages, 15, 20 bandages, because you'll be surprised how quickly you can go through that. And then if you're getting shot or attacked and you need those bandages, uh, you need to be able to get them quickly. So, you know, you can't be sitting there crafting bandages while you're bleeding out. So, um, yeah, Manson says he picks up every zombie hat. And that's how I am. I will pick up everything in game that I can um, and shred it just to get that cloth to be able to, to make those bandages. So yeah, if you are a beginner, um, you know, start creating those bandages so that when you get into PV and you're trying to kill 15 zombies with a bow, that you aren't instantly dying. Um, for my advanced tip, and this was suggested by Alcunian, um, who's a listener of the podcast, and he says, make sure you put punji sticks around your base. So if you have a ramp that goes up into your base, make sure that you put punji sticks around it so that vehicles can't easily boost into your base when using a ramp. This seems to be a bug that's been happening lately. And uh, you go through and, and people can boost into your base from the ramp that's going into your base and uh, they don't actually have to jump in normally. They can just get the vehicle going faster and get inside of your base. And so if you place punji sticks around, now those actually stop the vehicles and they will stop them from getting into your base. This doesn't 100%, so they will still have to um, destroy the punji sticks and be able to get in. Um, but you know, this is something, so if they're driving around, maybe they will figure you're the more difficult target and they'll go for a base that doesn't have this sort of defense. So that is my beginner and advanced tips of the week. Well, thank you very much for that, Brian. I, I like that segment of the show. It's a nice segment. So especially yeah, you, stuff. You, can, you can sit back and relax for a little it, bit. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not normally that. It's not normally. It's every once in a while. It's that, that, that's not what it was like today. It's nice to hear about that stuff. Um, well, let's get you out of here then. Um, qu quick note, um, this show is actually being done in 1080p at 60 frames a second. So we're giving that yes. a try. Um, so you'll see it's, that little the stream I, has seemed pretty smooth to me so far. I mean, what, I, yeah, what I might do is depending on how big this file is at 1080p, I may actually I may transcode it to 720 and not upload to 1080p because it's probably going to be like five gigabytes or something. Um, yeah. So we'll see what it's like. But either way, this will be at 60 frames a second on YouTube. You'll see that little 60 FPS thing. Let us know if that looks any different to you. Um, everything is in 30 frames, so. We'll, we'll see. It's on Twitch at 1080p at, at, at 60 frames. So we'll see what, what YouTube does with that and how big this file is. Um, so Musty says, for once I learned something I didn't, I never knew. Well, that's nice. Finally, you got something <laughs> like a tip of the week. Yeah, and it only took 24 weeks. It, it only 24 tips of the week. Thank you for the encouragement. <laughs> Brian with an eye, Aldridge, where can people find you on the internet? Yeah, if you want to go ahead and find me, go to biteoftech.com. Of course, that's with an eye as well. So biteoftech.com, that has all my contact information on there or if you want to just find my google plus profile you can go to google.com forward slash plus brian aldridge that will take you to my google plus page and of course go to our infectionpodcast.com website um, we have a contact form on there that gets a hold of both nick and i um, on there we have a join us for our clan uh, we have our forums we have our steam group we have lots of different ways that you can uh, get a hold of us and get to where you're playing with us. So if you want to become a part of the clan, make sure you check out our website, join, figure out that join us part. Or if you just want to see when we're playing and maybe join up with some people, do some BRs with people, but not be, be playing in the normal game with us, you're more than welcome to join our Steam group. Um, message one of us and you can come play and do some group BRs. Yep. All right. Thank you very much for that, Brian. Uh, don't forget our Twitter. It's at InfectionCast on Twitter. We have that. We're also on TuneIn Radio. We're on Stitcher Radio. Uh, we're on YouTube. We're on SoundCloud. We're on any podcast app. I mean, I if you have a place that you listen to content and we're not on there, let us know, and we'll 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 go through whatever it takes to get it uh, us submitted on there. Um, I can actually listen to us on our Amazon Echo. 
Really? What, through what? Is there a through podcast? Tune in. Oh, through tune. Have you tried that yet? Yeah. So now, if you just say, um, you know, like Alexa, please, you know, like play infection podcast it does weird things okay but i was able to go and i got to figure out how to make the search work for that but if you go into the web interface and go to tune in you can find ours and say all right play this on my echo wow look at that just so So everybody knows brian's wife has not watched a single episode of infection the h1z1 podcast i know she's she's at work okay um work on that all right well uh that's infection she sees me enough i don't think she needs to see me on screen (laughs) <laughs> hey that's it. you need to deal with that off uh stream oh so yeah, next yeah. so keep uh tune i know we got to get brian here we got to keep tuned to twitter for next week to figure out what we're going to do for the show um i'm going to be away most likely won't have stable internet so brian will most likely host or will figure something out um but yeah. stay tuned to our twitter and we'll let you guys know probably sunday i i leave sunday so i'll know sunday how the internet situation is so we'll figure something out by sunday um, okay. with what we'll do so brian thank you very much yeah. and uh you guys will see brian next week i'm not sure if you'll see nick, me next week but we'll figure something out like i said the website is infectionpodcast.com our twitter is at infectioncast. my name is nick craig at gamecast live is my twitter handle infectionpodcast.com is the website and we'll see you next week for infection the h1z1 podcast have a good night everybody have a good night